Hey Lennies and Bunny lovers, and welcome back to the channel. Lorelai here. Today, we are going to break down one of the biggest debates of all time in the rabbit community. Indoor rabbit or outdoor rabbit? Please subscribe, smash that like button, hit the bell, you guys know the drill. Let's hop right into this video. Also, don't mind this uh, pseudo Ariana Grande look that I'm doing. I have no idea why I decided to do this. I think I was just bored. And it's been a while since I've done something cool with my hair on the videos. Probably gonna regret this like months down the line and that's not what this video is about. This video is about indoor versus outdoor rabbits. And I know that this is a big point of contention for a lot of people. It's only been really in the 21st century that rabbits have really been spending a lot of time indoors with their human counterparts. And we've been seeing a lot of new developments coming out of this practice. We've been seeing how it affects our rabbits, their bodily health, their mental health, etc. And a lot of people are leaving behind the old ways of keeping your rabbits outside in cages or hutches, etc. This video is not to bash outdoor rabbits at all. I'm going to come in here and feed you the information as neutrally as possible and really break down advantages and disadvantages so that you can make the right decision for you and your rabbit. I know this is a big argument in other communities too, like the cat community and I'm sure many other pet communities. And I just wanna let you guys know before I get into the indoor versus outdoor thing, why rabbits are still you know, having difficulty being taken seriously as indoor household pets. And this is what really separates them from dogs and cats and maybe some other animals is because rabbits have a history, a very long history of being meat and being fur. When you type in rabbit housing into Google, the first things that pop up are cages and hutches, cages and hutches. One of the other reasons people really believe that rabbits belong outdoors is because the outdoors is where their ancestors lived and where their current wild cousins live. And people often conflate the domestic rabbit with the wild rabbit. The domestic rabbit has a lot of difficulty surviving outside. A lot of people also believe that rabbits are able to experience their natural rabbit behaviors in the outdoors. Okay, they believe that grass and soil and trees and plants and having a yard is inherent to a rabbit's needs. And while there are parts of that theory that I agree with, okay, because you could argue the same thing with any animal, right? Rabbits are able to survive just fine with those same experiences inside. So rabbits can mimic those behaviors indoors if we give them hay, toys, treats, hidey houses, tunnels, etc. And listen, I'm not one of those people that believes your rabbit should be locked in Tupperware and never see the light of day. I really don't agree with that. You guys know I've taken Lennon outside a couple times, but it has to be done properly, carefully, and under close supervision. This is not something to toy around with. It's not, okay, let me just throw you outside, close the door, and walk away, okay? Because there's a lot that can go wrong, but we're gonna get into that a little bit later. Now, the other argument is space. Let's say you live in a really small house, but you've got a huge yard. And some people may think that they're being fair by giving their rabbit the yard instead of the small house. To that I say, yes, there's probably more space outside but your rabbit's not gonna utilize all of that space all the time. Rabbits are relatively small animals in comparison to dogs, for instance. You're talking about a six pound bunny here. Now we also know that outdoor rabbits have a much shorter lifespan than indoor rabbits. Now this is scientifically proven. 
okay? And the, the reason that they live shorter lives is because of all the external variables that we don't have control over outside. This means extreme weather conditions, very hot or very cold, either or will kill your rabbit in a heartbeat, okay? Because rabbits can't regulate their own temperatures. And you've got predators, okay? A lot of people argue, there's no predators in my neighborhood, there's no predators in my country, or my rabbit is so well protected that no predator can get in. A predator doesn't even need to get in to your rabbit's house to kill them. They just need to taunt them and give them a heart attack to kill them. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard this story over and over and over. Uh, oh my gosh, a possum, a raccoon of the neighborhood cat, you know, a stray dog came charging toward my rabbit's hutch and scared it to death. It happens all the time. I don't care where you live in the world, there's always going to be a predator, okay? Bunnies are prey, that's just what it is. Think of the predators in the sky as well, okay? Birds of prey, those guys are some of the sneakiest ones you'll ever see. I don't even worry about the ground animals as much as the ones up there because at least the ones on the ground, it's almost like you know they're coming, but the ones in the sky, those are the ones that surprise you. So the next dangerous part of keeping your bunny outdoors is escapism, okay? They are escape artists. They can dig themselves out of, you know, hutches and cages. They can rip things open. They can chew things, wood, etc. Rabbits that live outdoors are also gonna be subjected to diseases more easily. For instance, now we're dealing with RHDB2, which is, an absolutely lethal disease. It'll kill your rabbit almost instantly with no signs whatsoever. We do have a vaccination for that now, which I've made a couple videos on. The other reason they live shorter lifespans outside is because of toxic plant life. A lot of people don't even know that they have poisonous plants in their yard. Sometimes you also don't know what plants and what grasses have been treated with pesticides. Next we have cars. Okay, cars are huge killers of, of stray rabbits. Indoor rabbits are living up to 14, 15 years nowadays in the 21st century, which is incredible, okay? When we look back on previous generations of domestic rabbits 20, 30, 40 years ago, they were living half of that usually and maybe some even less, just because we didn't have the information that we have now. Now the counter arguments are, oh, they can die inside your home too. They can die chewing electrical cords, they can die, you know, getting into some sort of mischief. And yes, that is true. And this is key though, this is where bunny proofing comes in, okay? You've got to protect your rabbits. If you don't trust your rabbit or you are unable to bunny proof for whatever reason, give them a designated area in your home that belongs to them and them only that is safe for them. What you can at least say is, okay, well at least one of those external variables out of my control didn't kill them. I personally don't like having to worry about how my bunny is gonna do overnight. I don't want to worry about, well, when I wake up, are they going to be alive? Now, the other pro of keeping your bunny inside with you is you get to see them and be with them all the time. Otherwise, what's the point of getting a rabbit? They learn to really love you, really trust you. They become less afraid. It's very, very rewarding. One of the biggest complaints I get from people keeping their bunnies outside is my rabbit is scared of me. My rabbit doesn't love me. Now I have seen a lot of beautiful and very advanced, I should call them setups. Some people have set up like sheds with air conditioning and tunnels and all this stuff. I've seen some really crazy looking things that are almost castle-like. If you can afford to do that, okay. If your rabbit is going to be safe in there and they have other rabbits to interact with, so they're not alone. I wouldn't recommend just putting a single rabbit alone in a shed. They're going to get very, very lonely and depressed. And 
nothing can get inside, to that I say great, because I would rather see a rabbit in that situation than at the shelter or dumped on the street. Now, if your bunny is indoors and you're wondering, well, how can I provide my bunny with the most wild rabbit life possible inside? And to that I say, you don't have to do that. There are some ways in which you can enhance their quality of life. And like I said earlier in this video, allow them to mimic a lot of those natural rabbit behaviors inside by providing them with the unlimited hay, the toys, the enrichment. I have so many videos on how to enrich your rabbit's life. Please check those out. I can guarantee you, your rabbit is not complaining like, man, oh my God, I wish I lived in a hutch outside instead of this luxurious house that my human has provided me with. But also one thing that I wanna mention too, give your bunnies access to windows. Lennon sunbathes all the time. And she loves going to our, I have a huge balcony window and she loves to look out of it. And what I like to do is I will open up the balcony door, but keep the screen on so that nothing can come in, but she can still feel the breeze. She can still hear the noises, the birds chirping and things like that and feel stimulated by all of that. And I think that's a really great way to give your rabbit a little bit of that outdoor experience without having to keep them outdoors. And a viewer sent me one of their habitats, which I included in one of the habitat videos where they created a ramp and the ramp led to a window. So they had a little window ledge where they could sit and look out the window. And if for whatever reason, you are going to keep your bunny outside because let's just say that like you just have no choice and that is just what you can give them. Make sure your rabbits are microchipped, okay? Because rabbits get lost all the time. Once they're lost, they don't live very long out in the wild, but if there's any chance at getting your rabbit back or your rabbit being found, it's gonna be through microchipping. And it's it's a really simple, easy, and inexpensive procedure that your, your local rabbit vet can do. And it's gonna have all of your contact information on there. Get your rabbits vaccinated, especially for RHDV2. This is a very lethal disease. If it's hot outside, make sure your rabbits have access to some kind of cool air. And on the opposite side, if it's really cold, your rabbits better be insulated with some sort of heat because rabbits will also freeze to death. Make sure that you are checking up on your bunny multiple times a day, not just in the morning and at night. That's not enough times. It's gotta be checking on them throughout the day. Make sure that they're not injured, that they haven't been bitten, attacked. Make sure that they're eating their food and drinking their water. Making sure that they don't have some weird lump or bump growing or, you know, these are things that you'd normally notice if your bunny lived inside with you all the time. To me, it's a lot more work to keep your bunny outdoors because there's more labor involved in, in keeping that bunny alive. But all right, guys. Thank you for checking out this video. Let me know in the comments below, do you have an indoor or outdoor rabbit? I'd love to know. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you all soon. Mwah.